I'd just like to read one verse of scripture with you to begin with. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 7. It says there, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three are one. The Bible presents us with the reality that there is one God only. The Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The book of Deuteronomy says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, one God only. But John reminds us or teaches us in 1 John 5, 7 that the one God of the Bible is revealed in three separate and distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Bible-believing evangelical Christians, Orthodox Christians, believe in the one God of heaven, the triune God, three in one. Three distinct persons within the Godhead, but yet one distinct God. Now, there's no really simple way of illustrating this. Whenever I was at school, we studied science. Science comprised of chemistry, physics, and biology. I was useless at all three of them. But biology is science, chemistry is science, and physics is science. And yet, while they all rely one upon another, they are all distinct in and of themselves. Got a glass here, and it's got water in it, commonly referred to as water, H2O. This is water in its liquid form. And then I've got another glass of water. This time it's water in solid form or ice form. And if I had a kettle and I filled it full of water and boiled it, steam would come out of it. That would be water in gas form. Now, this is water and this is water as well. They've got the same chemical properties, but they're distinct and they're separate the one from the other. And so it would be with gas. But steam, ice and liquid water, they're all water, they're all H2O. One substance, but at the same time, they're all separate and they're all distinct. If you're like me and at Christmas time you got some smelly stuff, uh, another simple lesson, old spice, cheap and nasty, but it's not too bad. This is old spice after she had lotion, liquid. And then this here, I need to use this a wee bit more often, old spice deodorant stick. And um, it's solid. And then old spice deodorant spray. And it's gas. This one's called Captain for some reason. Don't know why that is. Old Spice Captain. And uh, you can see it there. It's gas. Old Spice. Old Spice. Old Spice. All Old Spice, but all different. Separate and distinct. Same with the water. H2O. H2O. And if we had ga or steam, it would be H2O as well. And God is revealed as one God. In three distinct persons. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. And God the Holy Spirit is God. They are three separate and distinct persons. But they're co-equal. And they're co-eternal. And they're in union with each other. And they comprise of the one true God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit three in one. The old Westminster divines put it well in the shorter catechism. Are there more gods than one? There is but one only, the living and true God. The next question, how many persons are there in the Godhead? There are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one God, the same in substance, equal in power, 
and glory. Now, if you search the scriptures and study the Bible honestly, you'll read there in the book of Genesis and chapter number one and verse number 26. And God said, God is singular and God, the one true living God. And God said, let us, plural, let us make man in our plural image after our likeness. And right there in Genesis 1 verse 26, you're introduced to the triune God. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And it's my conviction that whenever God formed man out of the dust of the ground and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul, that God made man to reflect himself, one man, Adam, body, soul and spirit three in one. So let's have the right view of God in these days. The Bible says that the Father is God. And then the Bible also declares that the Son is God, the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 makes that abundantly clear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Thomas fell down before him and said, my Lord and my God. And then the Bible also talks about God, the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5, for example, Ananias and Sapphira were accosted by Peter of lying unto God. And he says, you have li- why hath Satan fell thine heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And then whenever we think of God the Father, divine attributes are attributed to him. God the Son, divine attributes are attributed to him. God the Holy Spirit, divine attributes attributed to him. Divine works, divine names ascribed again to all three. And this is a critical and a cardinal doctrine. And yet it's one doctrine that's very much undermined, overlooked and called into question. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. Do you know him today? John 17, the Lord Jesus Christ prayed, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. See you next time. Thanks for joining us.